to episode number eight of our career mode with West Ham United in season number one. Today we're going to start off with an away game to Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup. As you may know, we lost in the league very disappointingly 3-1. It wasn't really much of a game, so hopefully the boys can right that wrong, get a decent result against Palace that will be born with the first opportunity. A nice little header, had a bit more time than he actually thought there. Didn't get it on target, which is a little bit disappointing. But it's nice to see a chance come early in the game. West Ham have had many early chances and never capitalised as it is. Emerson on the board into four nows. Into commentary. Commentary with a right footed shot. Sticks it in the top corner. Great finish from the young man who's getting his first start under Bonaparte with a much changed side. Both sides, to be fair, have changed quite a few players. Arrested a few players, which is probably needed. Great turn from the young man. Central midfielder finds himself in acres of space and doesn't waste any time, gets that turn in and slots the ball home to give West Ham a deserved 1-0 lead. It's not to say Paz haven't been involved in the game, they just haven't got any rhythm at this moment in time. But I'm sure the West Ham fans will be taking this as a very, very much needed goal, let alone if they could hold on to get the result, and it would be Eduardo with a fantastic shot from distance. Ariola didn't look like he had it covered, Look, looked a little bit... A little bit wary of the of the shot, but thankfully it didn't go in. And West Ham will still retain that lead. But as you can see, Palace are coming back into it. Zaha, Eduardo crosses it for Ayu, who is unfortunately offside for the Crystal Palace fans. So it won't be 1-1 as we enter the 40th minute. West Ham are still keeping that 1-0 lead. They have been battered in the last five to six, seven minutes by Crystal Palace. So they're really starting to turn the screw, starting to turn up the pace of the game, starting to dictate a lot more than West Ham. West Ham had just got to knuckle down and keep going as we join in the 70th minute. Bourne loses the ball, regains the ball. Great fighting spirit. Chips it to the back post. Corne goes up. Looks like a foul. Referee waves play on. Comes to Downs. He plays into Ashby. Ashby into Bourne again. Looking to get to that byline. No, turns back inside. Great pass. Into four nails. He turns. He shoots. He scores. It's 2 0 to West Ham. That was a fantastic team goal by the Hammers. It looked like four nails had a cheeky look up at where Butland was, and then just swung his left foot at it and slotted it in that bottom corner. Be interested to see that replay because it was fantastic football. Born here with a great turn, using his size and strength. He does look up. He has a little look up, but then slots in the bottom corner. Could the keeper have done a lot better? Got to say yes. Butland's got to take some responsibility for that. He's got to be very disappointed. But great play by West Ham to make it 2-0. Fantastic look up there by Fournau to spot the actual opportunity as Bowen has a chance. Butland is equal to it this time. Richards will have the ball. And that is all we will see for this game. And it will be a 2-0 victory to West Ham. Filippo Bonaparte looking content. I wouldn't say happy because the form of late has not been good. But Fournau's put in a really good performance. Not many opportunities for him, but when he did have his opportunity, he took it very well. But he really did put in quite a performance, and so did Elliot Bourne, who looked really dangerous. The young man is coming along fantastically, and of course, Filippo will be very happy with Coventry, the young man scoring a goal on his full debut. We now move back into the Premier League with an away tie at Craven Cottage against Fulham. Really need a result. At the moment, West Ham are basically a cup team. They've had a victory in Europe and they've had a big victory in the Carabao Cup, but they have had literally nothing in the Premier League bar a couple of draws. Very disappointing draws, that as well. But it's Fulham who are starting off the absolute brighter side. West Ham, a little bit, look a little bit all over the place. They're not really getting to their man. They're standing off. Great save there by Fabianski. It comes to Gerd. He doesn't get it right at all. What did he do? Mitrovic just slots the ball home. I'm looking for offside. There's no sign of offside. There's no sign of VAR. It just looks like West Ham have just started the game asleep. Fabianski came out. Flapped at it. Got a hand on it. Should be cleared. A good ball comes at him. And he gets it all wrong. The man has just broken into the West Ham side after an injury. That is not good. As Harrison Reed goes in on Suchek. I think that looks a little bit worse than what it actually was. I think he actually got a foot to the ball there and it's just his trailing leg or his trailing knee that catches the, the ankle of Suchek. I think Suchek's making a bit out of that. Harrison Reed's got to be a bit disappointed to get a yellow card. Perhaps we'll be able to see in the replay. Goes for the ball, gets the actual ball. It is his trailing knee that catches the back of Suchek and the referee deems that a foul and awards a free kick. But Skamaka 
Knocks the ball out wide into corner. He's been very bright this season for West Ham. He plays it back into Skabaka. Great opportunity there for the big Italian. Had time. He had his presence. He chose to shoot first time and didn't trouble Leno in the Fulham goal at all. Really disappointing. He's got to be upset with that himself. Great opportunity. But again, it's Fulham on the attack. They have been all over West Ham. Wilson with a shot. Flapiansky is there to save the day. But again, Fulham constantly barraging West Ham. The shot hits the post. They're just not looking good at this moment in time. They really need something to wake them up as Bowen takes the corner, comes into Skamaka, doesn't get ahead on it. Comes out to Kerr, into Declan Rice. He has a bit of time. Back into Bowen. Bowen sets a little chip. Leno comes for the ball. Skamaka has the goal. He's beck and call and he's headed it over. That is very disappointing. Leno comes out. He gets it all wrong. He's about two yards past the ball. Skamaka has the goal at his beck and call and he fails to get it on target. That could be a huge miss in this game as Suchek picks the ball up, knocks it into Bequeta. Another huge opportunity for West Ham. They, they can't complain if they lose this game, which they do 1-0. They had the opportunities. Skamaka had a couple of decent opportunities. One fantastic with an open goal. And Bequeta right at the end should have been sticking that into the bottom or top corner. But we will go into the final game away to Silkborg in the European Conference League. Hopefully West Ham can keep their cup run going. Or was it be very disappointed as Antonio has the shot. It's saved. And of course, Ben Arama is there just to slot the ball home. This is a little bit more like it from the West Ham players there. Starting a the game really, really fast as McGrath gets picked up the ball. Knocks it to Antonio. Antonio's made it 2-0. This game is done and dusted after six minutes. Silkwalk have no answer for West Ham. They have literally come out like a battering ram at 100 miles an hour this is what we should be seeing in the Premier League from the West Ham team but for some reason they're definitely a cup team at this moment in time but Silkborn have got something to say about it no Ariola with a huge save there Declan Rice picked the ball up to clear it but what a save from Ariola as for now it's down the left hand side cuts back knocks it into Bequeta Bequeta time space flicks the ball up showboating he nearly scored it what an absolutely Magical goal that would have been from Baqueta. The time, the space, the magic. Some would say he's showboating there, but I think that was fantastic talismanship of the young man himself. But Silk Ball back into it. No, Ariola is equal to the opportunity. They've got to take their chances. That's the second good chance that West Ham have allowed them to have. As we join it 42 minutes in, downs, time and space. Into Baqueta, who's been a handful all game. Goes into corner A. Oh, he's just put it wide. He got it a little bit wrong there. Beautiful play again from Bequeta. Making these runs from deep. Finding pockets of space all over the pitch as Johnson picks the ball up. Second half, 73 minutes gone. Lanzini knocking the ball forward into Corne. Corne has got too much pace. He's got time. Can he spot it home? Of course he can. 3-0 to West Ham. 75 minutes on the clock. The game has to be done and dusted now. Silkborg have been absolutely atrocious in this second half. Offered no real attacking purpose. West Ham have been extremely comfortable at the back. And Cornet just whipped them on the counter-attack. Beautiful play. Beautiful pace. And a beautiful finish. Keeper had no chance to save that. Too much power and accuracy from Maxwell Cornet, who's had an absolutely electrifying start to the season. Felipe still not looking particularly happy. You can understand it. It is a 3-0 win away in Europe. You think he'd have a bit of a smile, but he hasn't. Perhaps that's the home or the Premier League form playing on his mind. We'll just have to wait and see. But what a great, great victory for West Ham in the Cup. Hopefully they can keep the European run going. And hopefully we can pick up some results in the Premier League. But we will take the 3-0 win. And that's normal. I will catch you next time.